What's happening, party people? Welcome to my week in review. Uh, this week, man, mm, 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 had some information in it. You know, there's a clip in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave in here or not. I might just leave that over to my Patreon side because that's kind of embarrassing. But, hey, we'll see what happens. I'm not 100% sure. See, this is my week in review video. I decided to take my daily videos upload them over on my Patreon site. They are free to view. You don't have to even sign in. You can just pop over to the Patreon site. The link is in the description area below. And I'm posting our daily videos over there. Very few people are watching those videos. I'd say on average about eight, nine uh, people a day are over there. So that leads me to wonder, was my viewers my churchgoers actually watching my daily videos or was videos just being popped up over there kind of randomly on people's suggestion page and they click on it, watch it a few minutes and then just move on. And I'm kind of wondering if most of these people viewing were my actually my subscribers. So anyway, if you want to see the full length of the daily stuff, you can pop over there to Patreon. These weekly videos are kind of condensed. And there was an event happened on one of my uh, nights. And, man, I'm not sure if I'm going to leave that clip in this video or not. Now, right now, it's in there. I might take it out and just move that thing over to the Patreon side. So, anyway, uh, you guys may know I'm doing a lot of shorts. That's kind of my primary daily thing. Little brief clips showing you how to uh, do something a little bit easier or uh, just answering questions. That's uh, a nice format, I think, for that. And, you know, this is how I do stuff. Maybe not how it's supposed to be done. So there's going to be people that don't agree with it. Uh, one video that they really didn't agree with was the one where I advised people not to wash their car if there's a risk of that thing freezing that evening, you know, I've washed my car before. It was in the 50s. That night dropped into the 30s, doors popping open while I was driving, doors not closing. You know, it wasn't a Volvo, but it still was a car that froze after I washed it, you know. So there's stuff that people are not going to agree with. Like, you know, I do 7,500 mile oil changes because the oil lab told me to go 12, 15,000. Those shorts are being uploaded if you're not watching shorts. Also, I'm really close to having a thousand people over on my TikTok. So if you are a TikToker, look up Robert DIY One or something like that. I'm there. Go ahead, hit the follow button for me if you would. That'd be appreciated. That way I can get over a thousand. And when I decide to start going live on these different platforms, I can do it. I can go live here on YouTube. I can go live on IG. I believe I got about 3,000 followers over there. And then uh, if you're a TikToker, I'll be able to go live on TikTok. So we do have merch. I had people say they didn't know I had merch. Posted a picture on Facebook of my stickers. My sister purchased one of my stickers, which was very nice of her. Supporting what I do here. We got these bumper size stickers. We got smaller ones that you can stick on your car. You can stick them on your toolbox. You know, hey, whatever you want to do. I appreciate the support. Got cups. Robert DIY. Got t-shirts. Coming out with another t-shirt this week. Maybe two. The one that, you know, a lot of people love. Completing the task at hand. It's going to be on a t-shirt. You can get that uh, sometime this next week. I hope to have a t-shirt saying a tow is cheaper than an engine. That's one of my favorites. And then, of course, one we've had for a while was Built Broke. And then my standard Robert uh, DIY t-shirt that uh, most people, that's like my number one seller, I think, the Robert DIY YouTube logo one. Probably, uh, man, still a couple months out from getting my t-shirt printer that'll print 
uh, t-shirts faster for us, make it easier for us, make it more flexible for us to put out different, different designs. And if you have a small business or something and you just need a couple of t-shirts printed or doing a family reunion or some kind of car event, you want t-shirts, man, we'll have that. And, you know, if you're ordering several, may be able to give you better pricing so that uh, it's not difficult to get them. Uh, hopefully, somebody will be easier to work with. And, you know, since my daughter, you know, she's gone to school for that kind of stuff and trained, it'll be good quality. You know, not something that you're like, dang, you know, I wish these things would have been straight. I wish the logo would have been a little better or whatever. You know, you uh, communicate with Elizabeth and she'll make sure that stuff is professional. Great. Yeah, you know, I had people say, hey man, just, you know, farm that stuff out. I farmed out stickers and had to order stickers three times to get it the way I needed to be. And, you know, that's just the way it is. Hard to get stuff done right when it's out of your control. You know, still traveling around. A lot of people don't know. I can travel to where you are to fix your vehicle. I have people call me saying they're in the Chicago area, and man, I'm in Chicago four or five times a year. Uh, sometimes my schedule is kind of tight, and sometimes it's not. Uh, recently, it's been kind of tight because I've made a decision. I'm trying to get this backlog cleared out before I, you know, go in settle in on an area. A couple of years ago, I was in the Bay Area for four months, and been in Chicago for a month at a time and stuff like that. Uh, right now, I'm talking to a guy in the, I would guess, the Southern Virginia area, not far from Richmond, that I think he's just as good of a mechanic as I am, and he's about to maybe start uh, picking up some of the people that want me to help them and him going to help them. You know, he works on a number of different cars, replaces engines, transmissions all the time. Very easy to work with guy. He's mellow. And, you know, he knows a lot about uh, Volvo's P80s, P2s, going into the P3s. Very capable of helping people in that region. So, hopefully in the next week or two, he'll be open to uh, helping some of the people that have contacted me and I just don't have the time to get out there. I uh, do not look at other mechanics and shops as competition. Uh, we're out here trying to keep our cars on the road. Uh, there are people that use me because my pricing is just extremely low. Uh, it ain't free all the time. You know, if you're in some kind of dire need you have one vehicle, you need to get to work. I am in your area or close to it. I got parts you need, contact me, reach out, and we'll do everything we can to help you. Uh, most people use me that, you know, they're more than capable of paying shop fees for stuff. I had a message from a lady yesterday or the day before. She said that she went to a shop not one that I know of or recommended. And she was thrilled that they replaced her heater core on her S70 for like $550. I was like, heater cores are 80 bucks, maybe a hundred. Takes less than an hour to do it. You're thrilled about paying 550 for a heater core. She could have hired me, paid me to drive to her area, paid for a hotel, paid for my travel time, bought the new part, had me do that and paid for me to get back home for less than that. Man, I'm like, man, these shops are expensive. So, I mean, it would have been probably the same price. And then I would have probably let her know about other stuff that needed to be taken care of. Man, usually when I show up at a place, I take care of other stuff. I showed up at a place the other day on my way out to Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, Ames, Iowa, guy wanted me to stop there for a few hours so you know i popped in there on my way to uh, lincoln nebraska because my parts had not arrived in lincoln nebraska and man we opened the hood i could see his struts were loose 
you know, the nut on top of the struts and stuff like that. And I was able to knock out, man, I would probably say about $3,000 worth of work. O2 sensor cam seals I had with me, uh, tightened up his struts, did a, another thing or two. You know, we worked for maybe three in the afternoon to 10 at night. I, I would say if he had to go to a shop, he'd have been three G's deep. And we did that for under a thousand bucks. You know, he paid for travel, meals, you know, stuff like that. A night in the hotel because I had to get a hotel at night. And he still saved, you know, with probably 30 cent on a dollar, you know. So, it's fortunate that I do carry some of these parts with me. I know how to get in there and out, uh, replacing that stuff quick. It's not always like that on vehicles that I'm not familiar with. That's why I try to stick with these uh, P80 Volvo, some of the P2 stuff, if it's not too complicated. And, hey, I'm being acclimated to the P3 stuff. So, I mean, I'm here to help, here to save you money. Um, not real expensive. You know, it's more beneficial to you if you use the videos, do it yourself. It's very beneficial to have me do the stuff, even if you're covering my travel expenses. And uh, by all means, if you got a car that's down, you need somebody to fix it take your car to the shop you know don't wait on me you know but if people like this guy in virginia is going to start you know freelancing and and reaching out and helping people kind of like i do you know we get a few people across the country do that little network man that'd be great you know i even have a couple of people not many but a couple of people that have paid me shop fees on stuff, you know? So I come do a job for them. I tell them 400 bucks. They pay me eight, 900 bucks because they know the shop would have charged them eight, 900 bucks. And they appreciate the fact that I was probably more honest with them about what else need to be done. Or they just felt like, Hey, if I were to pay the shop 900 bucks, I'm going to pay Robert 900 bucks, you know, blessing to me. They appreciate the service. The job was done right. And and that's fine. I also had a brother-in-law that used to do that. He had a Jaguar I worked on, XJ8. Man, you know, he would get an estimate from the dealer, have me do the job, and then pay me what the dealer was going to charge him. Yeah, I, I appreciate those people that, hey, they, they do more than I ask as far as the payment-wise, but not everybody's in that position. You know, I'm, I like for people that have multiple vehicles and stuff like that to cover the, the cost that I request. But if you are in a bad spot in life, man, you know, uh, we are here to help you. I got people that have joined my Patreon site. I look at that as, as money that I'm not really working for that I use to help people in need, you know, and that kind of offsets my budget now. Being newly married, my budget has changed, but uh, I'm still, you know, determined to do what I can to keep the cost down. You know, I've probably gone from 30 cent on a dollar to on average 50, uh, maybe 60 cent on a dollar, but we are still saving people a lot of money and we're going to try to keep it that way. You know, God will uh, bless me some other way to uh, get ahead in life. But right now, you know, I I need to work every day. And uh, uh, probably when I'm on the road, uh, if I don't do 300 bucks a day, I'm, I'm losing money and hurting. So I try to make sure I stay busy when I'm out there on the road. And uh, most of the people have been real uh consider it with working with my wrecked up schedule and my inability to give an estimate. You know, if, if I gave this guy in Ames, Iowa, an estimate from what he said he wanted me to do, we'd have probably estimated him four or 500 bucks. We get there, man, we're doing PCV stuff and all this other kind of stuff. It ran above that, but he was very appreciative about what we were able to do. He said his car has never run that good since he's owned it. And uh, he bought it from a Volvo enthusiast. 
nice saffron wagon and he just appreciated that I was able to stop through there. So we'll probably stop through there again. Ames, Iowa on our way back to Lincoln, Nebraska. I was working on a BMW that unfortunately was a mess and man, those costs are running out of control. Got there, uh, somebody did a cylinder head job on it, was two inches away from replacing the water pump. Probably cost some five Gs on that cylinder head job on that car. Uh, 15 minute water pump job, left a 30 year old water pump on the engine. When I got to that point, I had to stop. I couldn't keep working and not replace that water pump because now it was leaking. Just, you know, 10, 20,000 miles later, why somebody would leave a 30 year old water pump on a car when they're in there like an inch from it is beyond me. But that's the kind of stuff people got to deal with with some of these mechanics. And it's, it's a crying shame. So anyway, with no further ado, I'm going to turn you over to this week in review on videos. Got some good footage on there. Got a special clip in there that I'm more inclined to leave in there, man. I I laugh my head off every time I see it. But, you know, it's it's probably stuff that needs to be on a viral clip. So I'll probably break that out and throw it in a, a clip that will go viral. So uh, hope you enjoy this week's video. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there. And by all means, try to find a way, man. Five bucks, ten bucks, twenty-five bucks, a hundred bucks. Uh, find a food bank in your area and donate to that thing, man, so that people in your area won't suffer uh, hunger, especially during this time of the holidays, man. That's just, man, if you do anything do that you know you know i mean do that help help people not be hungry during this holiday time it's very depressing and you know it's a tough time for people especially in this economy man it's just man i don't know how i do as well as i do with some of the downtime i have heck i've had three days downtime now uh coming back from out of town dealing with weird stuff going on with my mail you know, with the VA, I was jacked up with the VA for like seven, eight hours yesterday trying to sort through some of the stuff they got going on with my health care. And I, I get a modest uh, disability check that vanished. I thought somebody was stealing my mail. It's the VA jacking it over here for some invoice I hadn't seen. You know, it's just, you know, life is full of surprises sometimes that you know, nobody likes surprises on the negative. Man, I'd be pleased when I open up my PayPal and see somebody send me 20, 40, 50 bucks from watching a video. That's a pleasant surprise. When you go to open the mail and look for your little, you know, modest check that you're getting from some damage you received while you were serving active duty military and it's gone. Uh, it took me four hours to figure out where it was. I thought somebody down at the post office was helping themselves to my lunch money. <laughs> so anyway, have a great day. Help somebody in your area, especially through your food bank system. And uh, man, be blessed. Have a happy and safe holiday season. Like I said, this week's videos got something special in there for you guys to laugh about. I mean, you'll cringe first, then you'll laugh. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert. That's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. My buddy Matt brought by his wife's V70 all-wheel drive. You've seen this vehicle before. It's got an issue with drivability and smoking, so I'm suspecting it's got a good-sized vacuum leak. So let's pop the hood, take a look at that, see what we can find. First thing you want to check is your turbo piping. I feel around this one. It feels a little old. Got a strange clamp on it. 
I look around here and I look up over there and that thing looks like it's got a bulge in it. Let me put some light on it. So, I don't know if you see that bulge right there, but it also looks like it has a tear in it. Let's see if I can put my finger in that thing. Oh yeah, we got a big tear in this turbo pipe. So this pipe is gone. That'll probably cure their problem there. They want me to check a couple other things. So I'm going to get one of those, put it on there. I have one. And we'll check a few other little things here. That one looks good. And that'll probably stop the smoking too. When these things are not pressurized right, they smoke and do all kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and get one of those, replace that, and go from there. Make sure the PCV is hooked up back there. And it looks like it's hooked up good. Make sure the PCV is hooked up over here. Do, do, do. And it looks hooked up over there. It's good. And it's serviceable. Feels nice and soft. Let me grab one of those hoses and go from there. And there it is, folks. It's multi-layered. The inside layer there is holes in it. Another part there holes in it, and it's just bleeding out of this thing. I seen this cooling hose back here. That look Volvo-ish, and it's stressed because the turbo pipe is not on right. So I pushed it down a little bit, and that thing sprung a leak. Just burst. Looks like an improper hose. The proper Volvo hose has a lining in it, kind of a hard lining, because that coolant coming off that turbo could be several hundred degrees. Glad I have one in stock. She said her fan is running odd times. I have a Volvo coolant temp sensor. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Guys, when y'all pull a thermostat housing and you see an aftermarket thermostat in there, please, please, please get a Volvo thermostat. Please. That's the critical stuff. I'm going to see if I got a couple of headlights handy and wrap this up for tonight pick it up first thing in the morning so they can come get it. I got a brake light on, so I'm gonna check, see if this brake fluid is low. Uh, it's a little low. Not much, but it's right at the minimum mark, so I'm gonna add some brake fluid in here. Wow, that's a lot low. All right, brake fluid low. Second stop of the day, discount tires. I have a flat. They have ability to put a replacement tire on there for me. So here it is. Man, that thing had good tread on it too. Somebody hit a curb, destroyed the sidewalls. So I got a tire off of eBay we're gonna replace it with. But I noticed this tire was patched. They didn't tell me that when they sold it to me and they've been grinding me about a review. Yeah, I got a review for y'all. I assumed that all these tires were matching on this car, but they're not. The two rears are matching. The front is not matching. This front is not matching. And this car is all-wheel drive, so it's critical that all the tires are the same size or this thing will eat up the angle gear. So you're supposed to measure the circumference of the tires, and if any of them are more than a half inch apart from each other, it's prone to destroy the angle gear. So I guess I need to let him know that so he could decide what he want to do with these things and go from there. Being that all these tires are different, if they're close, he's gotten extremely lucky. But this tire is directional and it's facing the wrong direction. That arrow should be pointing the other way. So this tire really should be on the other side of the car. And we got a lug nut missing there. I'm not sure why. Let me look. I guess it's just missing. Don't look like nothing's broke off in there. So I think I got a lug nut I could put in there and go from there. And this car has horrible headlights. I would call those C grades. They might come on, but they ain't illuminating nothing. And I have some B grade lights here. These are Volvo and a reflector. So I'm going to swap this stuff out with the stuff that's there, help them out a little bit. 
And this car is all wheel drive. And it has different tires on it. There's a notation in the video in which experience. If you run these vehicles with different size tires, you can destroy the angle gear real quick. You'll have to stop that car. That angle gear could be so messed up. A lady had one of these. It was a 99. She had a flat, went to the place to get a tire put on or the flat fix. They told her they couldn't. They sold her two new tires instead of four new tires. She put the new tires on the car, drove 50, 60 miles, and the angle gear was destroyed. Had to get towed off the freeway. $2,800 worth of damage. So she bailed on the car. It is critical for these tires to be almost the same circumference. I think none of the tires are supposed to be beyond a half inch in circumference from the smallest to the biggest. So it's critical. If you want to keep your all-wheel drive system going, that you keep these tires symmetrical or just remove the shaft and drive it like a front-wheel drive car. This one here has the support for the carrier bearing halfway down the shaft is rotting away. One part of it's actually missing that holds part of the exhaust. So let me show you that. So it's important to check these out too, or this shaft starts vibrating in there and it'll tear that shaft up that way as well. So be mindful of those two things. This is the support that holds the drive shaft in place. And there's supposed to be a attachment there that attaches to that exhaust. The one on the other side is there. But the one on this side is rotted away. If that's rotted away, I would just have to imagine the rest of this is on its way out and needs to be replaced. So there's a couple of screws there you take out. These four screws here you take out and take those exhaust hangers loose. Slide this thing out, slide another one in. So I'm going to try to do that here if he shows up with this part. Uh, for now, it looks like that's kind of holding up okay. Last time I had the car several months ago, these fuel lines were sagging halfway down to the ground. And I supported them up like this. And that seems to be holding well. So the fuel lines are up and safe. Looks like the viscous coupling is leaking a little bit. They need to get a fluid check on that, I guess. But, look like there may be some oil leakage up there as well. Something's leaking up there. They have a LED bright installed on these. But man, this thing is so busted up inside. It's all loose and stuff like this. I don't know how they were getting any kind of right shinage on the road from this light assembly so anyway we got this one hooked up for him i'm gonna screw it in and work on the other one here's the light i just pulled out see all that yellowing in there even though they have a led light that's shot this wasn't that bad i tried to clean it hit it with some oil eater it almost turned like that immediately so I had some reflective paint I sprayed in there with this. It's not as rich and shiny as it's supposed to be. And as light as I tried to spray it, I still got to run. Not sure if I should touch this side or not. I hit a little bit over there, a little bit in the top. But this is equivalent to what this is. So I'm not sure that's going to be an improvement, but... At least on the high beam side, they'll have improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this piece in here. And hopefully that'll help them. I don't have another one of these handy at the moment, driver's side. Here we go. A lot better. We got some B-grade lights instead of C-grade lights. And hopefully one of these days they'll be able to get some new ones or some A-grade. Like the Jewels. Notice a couple other things while I was poking around. Looks like the radiator is starting to leak. That's a hazard because these things right here have been known to shear right off, pop off, lose all your coolant almost instantly. Alarm horn is messed up. And again, the mismatched tires is a concern. 
So let me call them, tell them to come get it, because I don't have parking for another car. And we'll go from there. Kicked off the tinker day, tried to flash an S70 file to an S70 ECU in my car. Another failure. But my tune flashed fine, so I don't think it's got anything to do with us. It's got something to do with that ECU. We're going to try to get that back to the tuner and see where we can go from there. I also took a battery, put on the charger. I think I need to clean my battery post on my car out with a battery post cleaner. Let me get on to my next task at hand. Man, this battery I've had, I don't know where, what it's doing here. It's too big to fit like a Jaguar battery. Let me see if it'll start this car. Got it connected. Ugh. Keys out of the car. Must be in my pocket. Batman. I like this thing got lawnmower syndrome. Oh, let it go too quick. Dang it. It's flooded out again. Jeez Louise, how'd I do that? Good lord. Up. Come on. Dang it. I had to pull the plug and drop some oil. the hit. I think the 
wire harness on top of this cluster is messed up. Not sure why I got a battery light. But, uh, may not be charging. Alright, it should, it should idle now. Been a minute. Let's go see what's going on around it. It is smoking a little bit. Not much. Probably shouldn't be smoking at all. We'll see if it smokes when it's warmed up. Belts are hooked up. Alternator wires are hooked up. I think we got oil. I already checked oil. We wipe that off, see if we got oil while it's running. No oil. Barely on the tip. So it's running low. I don't know if she's been running low or not. Lifters going ticking, stop ticking, ticking, stop ticking. But I'm gonna let it warm up a couple more minutes then I'm gonna check compression. Nice, fresh oil. I'm gonna pull those plugs. That oil cap seal is good and I don't know why there's rat crap, but hey, that's just part of it. Fuel line cracked. Let's go ahead and pull these plugs and do a compression test. Oh yes. We got 165 there and 162 there. Mm, mm, mm. Looks like a good engine, folks. Let's check two more cylinders. Ouch, we got two low cylinders. We got 128 there and 120 there. So I'm going to pull one of these out and check those cylinders again. I forgot to run this car out of gas. That's the best thing to do. Run them. Pull the fuel, let it stall out so you don't get no false readings from fuel in the cylinders. I tend to believe this car has some fuel injectors leaking because it's hard to start sometimes. Came up a little bit to 132. I'm going to check that last cylinder. Then I'm going to put the plugs back in, start it up, run it till it's dry, and then check them again. I'm up around 145, which is not bad. These spark plugs look clapped out that looks like a 40 gap on that one and a couple of these other ones look gap real far so i'm gonna drop a good set of plugs in there that'll burn the gas off that plug looks almost new gap wise and run the car for a few minutes five ten minutes check compression again just to be sure because i got three good cylinders and two bad cylinders but I didn't run it dry, so let me put some good plugs in there, let it run five minutes, check it again. Because if this is a good engine, it's a good engine. Coming to change the oil on this car on the side of the street, and it's got a power steering leak. Doo 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 doo, and a little bit of an oil leak. <laughs> and it's a manual. See if we can see where that power steering fluid is coming from. And that looked like it's coming from the lines. Uh, let's keep on going back. That looks like engine oil there. Ugh. Wow, look at that. Jack out, jacked up the lines on there. Of got some magic stuff going on. New control arms. Oh, I'm oh, getting oil all over me now. I think it's the line. I think it's the rack. Oh yeah. Coming out of the boot, the rack's leaking. Crap. Does this have an all-wheel drive rack or a front-wheel drive rack? Looks like an all-wheel drive rack. Okay. 
There you have it. Oil pumping out the rack. Man, I hope that oil bolts proper because that's what I come to get. And this rear main seal is leaking on this thing too, it looks like. Possible, maybe. It looks like it's wet in there. It does. Mm, mm, mm. Man, I don't know. I thought we put a rear main seal on this thing. Maybe not. That would suck. Try to get this oil changed. About to kick off the tinker day, man. I really hope it doesn't rain today. I hadn't checked the forecast, but oh man, I want to spend the day tearing this car apart, getting it to the salvage yard by tomorrow. Got another one on its way in. So let's check the weather report. I'm gonna recheck compression on that car with some good spark plugs and see where we're at and get that thing in the driveway and start tearing it apart. Supposed to be a real nice day today, up to 75 degrees, cloudy, but no rain. No rain expected till next Thursday, so we should be good to go. Well, it's going to be a beautiful day. I had some spark plugs that I pulled out of lemonade a couple of weeks ago, and man, they were gapped at about 34, so I re-gapped them to 28 where they should be. They looked way better than those, running real rich. Dropped them in there, boom, car fired right up. First try. I let it idle for about five minutes, you know, burning with better plugs in it. Pulled the plugs out, checked those two cylinders that were lower compression. But before I did that, I pulled the fuel pump relay, let the car run out of gas instead of killing it with the ignition key. And man, that was awesome. 155, pretty much across the board on this engine. One of them was 158, I think, and one was in the 140 range, but very uh, healthy engine. So I'm gonna pull this engine and trans out, probably use it in another vehicle. I might pull the head off, clean up the valves, replace the valve stem seals. I tested the PCV system, it is on the bad side of things so that needs to be redone but hey what engine with over 250,000 miles doesn't need to be refreshed I'm assuming this is the original engine I don't know what timing belt parts are in there and I definitely want to put the newer lifters in there so let's get this thing in the yard and start tearing it apart However, I'm going to pull my tow dolly out because I'm going to try to tow it out of here, tow it to the junkyard first thing in the morning. So let me go ahead and move my stuff out of the way, hook up my tow dolly to Panther, and go ahead and get this thing in here and start tearing it apart. Here I go. I got everything cleaned off of the tow dolly. I'm going to unlock it there, there, and back there. Hook this thing up to Panther, get it out of the way, and back that car up in here. Got enough space here to bring the car in. I kind of clipped Lucille getting that tow dolly out, but I don't see any new damage. So that's good. I didn't want to destroy that door, even though that door has a blemish or two in it somewhere, if I remember correctly. Huh? I don't see any. Anyway, let me go ahead and get this car in here. I have an alignment issue because this wheel is turned a little bit and making a left turn. And this wheel over here is pretty straight. So I'm not sure how hard it's gonna be to drive that car in there, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna back it up, put it on jack stands, rip it apart. Let's get cracking. This is where she sits until I get it torn apart which is going to be today. No better day than today. The windows are good. It even looks like this windshield is good. 
I don't see any damage to this windshield, so I'm gonna try to get this as well. So, with no further ado, let me get cracking. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the battery, get it on jack stand, drain the fluids, coolant, transmission, and engine oil, and then get to pulling this thing apart. I'm gonna even pull this headliner out, all this trim in here, because a lot of people are losing this different trim in here. I'm gonna pull the sunroof because the sunroof looks like the glass is in decent shape. It's got a minor imperfection there, but other than that, it's in good shape. No bulging around the seal. This thing's coming out. This even looks, oh, it's damaged there. That's a shame because this even looked okay. All right, it's about five minutes to 11. Let me go ahead and put the wheel stops in. Find me some plywood my jack stands and get going first liquid on the drain fuel have no idea how much we have i pulled the stem out with the stem removal tool just pumping it out the fuel gauge on this car did not work so we don't know how much gas is in there but we know the pump works so we'll check it here in a minute i can hear the pump whining the tank is officially empty I'm gonna pull this wire, turn the ignition on, and start draining coolant oils. Coolant, engine oil, and transmission oil. I looked under this car. Let me tell you something. I don't know if I've ever seen an 850 this dry. This thing is dry. I don't see no fluid anywhere. No coolant, no oil, no transmission fluid, nothing. This thing is dry as a bone. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Let's get to pulling. As suspected, transmission fluid looks pretty bad. But running, not skipping a beat. Oops. Got a little bit of radiator fluid, folks. The radiator is leaking. Maybe original. I'm not sure. Wow, look at this hole in the bottom of this intercooler. This thing was losing some boost pressure. The AC condenser is probably the only thing salvageable here. And it's kind of beat up, but let's go ahead and take it. The dryer even looks like it's in good shape. It's got an alternator light, but I don't know if that's an electrical issue or something's actually wrong with it with the alternator but let's go ahead and keep pulling parts well here goes the alignment issue this wheel was pushed back and bent the mount on the subframe buckled the subframe pulled that wheel back so that's why this wheel was pulled back and it twisted that a little bit so there's the alignment issue i don't see any tears in these cv boots and i don't see any moisture on this rack so i'm gonna pull this rack probably get that to tony and pull these mud flaps real quick pull this light here coming apart slowly but surely i'm trying to get to where i can pull this engine out getting ready to disconnect the oil cooler lines the fuel lines i got the front mount loose need to get the back mount loose and the torque mount loose and the O2 sensor wires loose because I'm pulling all this up with the harness attached. I had to take this loose here. I'm at a work stoppage. I'm trying to find my sockets. There's a bag with a bunch of my sockets in it. I can't seem to locate it, so I'm going to keep looking for that. Only thing I got left to do to get this engine out of here is cut those two heater hoses because I know they're not going to unplug right and pull the axles then i could lower this thing and get this cherry picker over here i got the engine almost out i should have took that oil thermostat off it rubbed made it a little difficult for this coming out and it's coming out folks man that turbo feels tight too look at that thing that thing looks good i'm going to go ahead and Take a break, go get something to eat, and come back and work till 9. It's probably like 7.15. 
both of these CV axles, even though they feel okay, they're torn open, so I'm not going to worry about those. My challenge is going to be keeping the tire straight and get it up on the dolly with the come along. If I find the come along wherever I put that. 7.45 back from lunch. Let me finish getting this engine out of here. I don't know if I can get that engine by here or not. I might have to set this engine over here until I get this car out of here. Well, that didn't work. I twisted the thing a little bit and it started rocking. I couldn't stop it from rocking and it fell over. So, let me try to get this thing back up right. I don't think it broke the oil pan. Hit the transmission and I got oil spilling out so let me not try to make a mess look like it took the blunt of its hit right here which is probably a good thing I was screaming trying to hold that thing up but that didn't work turning that up was easier than I expected hopefully I didn't destroy my engine hoist let me try to clean this up and see what else I got going on. Tried to move that engine and transmission off the sidewalk. I could not do that. I had to pull the transmission off the engine. One of the torque converter bolts was stuck. Ended up stripping it. Got five of them out, one strip. They're just in there too tight. Somebody didn't torque them right, over torque them. I seen evidence that this engine was a replacement engine to the vehicle. Anytime you see these seal tags down here like that, that means that this engine was purchased from somewhere. Not sure where, but that's a salvage yard type of marking on this engine. It's a good engine, so it'll serve its third car. And uh, I'm gonna check the timing belt, all the seals in it. I'm gonna pull ahead, put new valve stem seals in it, clean up the valves and go from there. I'm surprised my engine hoist lift is working. It had overextended. I was hanging on it and it popped back in. Then I lowered it all the way down and after pumping it about 30 times, it started pumping up again. So I think I dodged the bullet destroying this thing. Anyway, I'm going to put something in the back of lemonade and call it a night. Here we go, folks. And lemonade. And it looks like we got something going on here. action all right man you have a good one uh, you how do you pronounce your name uh, Anna. okay yep. all right man thanks again yep, no here it is folks delivery has been made Volvo original looks like it's got a key tumbler missing there That key tumbler is damaged there.
they didn't put the hubs in there, so the wheel almost fell off. You can see how that's cocked. The uh, caliper is holding it on. I'm gonna try to get it up on my tow dolly. Hopefully that'll work out for me. I'm gonna try to use this come along to get this car up here. Maybe tough. The hub came apart because they didn't put a axle in here. And the hub has fallen off. It's being held on by this caliper bracket. Wasn't for that caliper bracket, this would just fall away from the car. So I'm gonna try to get it to pull up on here. Hopefully it'll go and we'll see what happens. Here I go. Let me tell you guys how long this is going to take. It is 6.02 now. Well, look at here. 20 minutes. We got it up here. Let me go ahead and strap it down and get her home. Nothing's on the ground. Thank God. Put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking across the floor. Put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking out the door. You know what's better than having one yellow Volvo 850T5R in yellow? Having two. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, boy. All right, let's get home because it's about to get dark. Messing around. Messing around, Freddie Brown clown. Messing around. This is what happens when you move a car without a CV axle tip in it. Somebody took the CV axles out of this car, they rolled the car around, and the wheels literally falling off the car. It also destroyed the control arm. So, with all the lug nuts on, this is what you get. The uh, hub is destroyed, the rotor's destroyed, this bracket here that holds the brake, that may be destroyed because it was bent. The transporter had to move this car around like that and that is what happens. Always have a CV axle bolted in your hub before you move a car five inches or it'll destroy it. All right, now you know. At a minimum, you wanna use these to bolt into your hub if you need to move a car without CV axles, transmission, engine, stuff like that. And it is parked. We're gonna call it a night. Man, the front end of that thing is high. With no engine in them bill steams. I should probably take the struts off of it. Let that thing down a little bit. But it's only going to be like that for a couple weeks. I'll be back. Take care of it. I got, got them stacked again. Let me make sure this one back here is not in the way of the neighbor. And I'm going to put the box back in it and lock it up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, it's... It's polar inside. That's what I try to keep it. So, let me lock these cars up. Call it a night. Oh my gosh, dog, hush. Well, here it is, folks. Too bad I don't live on the river. I would give it a Viking salute. Sending it on its way. I'm going to pull those hubs off real quick. Leave that control arm it's bent i might grab the other control arm i'm gonna jack this subframe up tack those bolts in there get this exhaust off of here and take that latch off of there let me do those things real quick so i can get ready to get out of here if you made it this far I trust that you found some information that was either useful or entertaining so go ahead and hit the like button and if you would like notification of future videos that I post, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. You can follow me on other social media apps by looking for at Robert DIY. Some form of that should bring up the other channels that I have on places like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so forth. If for some reason you need some more personal help, Go to my website at robertdiy.com 
and use the phone number that I have posted there to send me a text message or you can email me. If you have questions or comments, please make a comment below. And if you'd like to make some kind of financial contribution to what I got going on here, go to my channel and hit the more link at the end of the introduction statement and it'll show you different ways that you can support me financially. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.